By signing in with Google, you can get the user information automatically. And we will create here this example where you have a button and if you press it, then you can choose your account, your Google account. And after you have tapped this account, then you go inside of your application and then this will load. So we get the name of the Google account user and also the email and also his image. Let's get started with the setup of Firebase. For the Google sign in, we need to use Firebase and therefore you need to go here to console Firebase google.com and create a new project. And then you type here your project, for example, Google sign in. Then you click here on continue and you can enable this analytics if you like. I will disable it and then you click on create project and then you click here continue after everything is set up. Here inside we create first of all Android and here you need to supply the package name and therefore we go to our project and here inside you need to go to your Android folder, to your app, to your source, to your main and here inside you have the Android manifest and here you simply copy this package name and then you go back to your browser and put it here inside. Then you can put your name inside, for example, Android. And here you go to this question mark and click on this one. Now we need to do here some setup and you can use here Mac or Linux or if you have Windows, you need to click here and take this command. I have here currently Mac, therefore I take this command. And then you go simply into your terminal or your command line on Windows and then paste this command here inside. Then you need to type here Android in small letters for the password. And then you see here that we get here the SHA-1 and also the SHA-256. And we want to use here first of all the SHA-1. So copy this one and go here back and paste it here inside. And then you click on register app. Now you can download your config file, so download it. And then you need to go here in your project to the Android folder, to the app folder. And here inside of the app folder, you need to paste this file inside like this. Let's go back to the browser and here you click on next. And now you, we need to do some more setup. So what we need to do here is to set up first of all this dependency. So copy this one and then you go to your project again. And then you can close this app folder and here you see a build gradle and make sure that you don't take this build gradle here inside of the app folder, take the other one. And here we have some class paths and we simply put it here under our dependencies, this Google services inside. And then you go again to your app folder and into this build gradle. And now we need to look here more down and you see that we need to put this Google services inside. So you copy also this one. And then you go down to the file and here at the end, you simply paste this apply plugin Google services inside. And I will also put here two other configuration steps inside. So first of all, I go also to the default config and put here this multi dex enabled inside. And therefore we also need to also put here down in our dependencies, this implementation multi dex inside. So if you face any problems, then also put this inside. Otherwise you don't need it. I will put it here inside. And now we are done with the configuration. So you can click on next and here you simply go to the console. Now we can click here on settings and project settings. And here you see that we have our Android app registered. And by the way, if you want to set up here also other apps, then you can click here on add app. And here you can also add the iOS client and also the web client. And I will link in the video description a video how to set up this so you can simply watch this other video. If we are already here inside, we can also add the SHA-256. So again, go to your terminal and I hope you have it still open. And here we have the SHA-256. So simply copy this one and also put here this fingerprint inside. And here you simply paste it inside and he should recognize it. And then you click on save. And now we have both of these shards inside and this is needed for the Google sign in. And another thing, what is really important to set here, the support email. So also choose your email and then it should get updated. And after it, you also can go to the authentication and here inside you need to click on get started. And here it's really important that you go to Google and then you click here on edit. 
and then you need to enable your service and you also need to click here on save. And this is really important. If you don't do this, then your application or your Google sign-in wouldn't work. All right, this is everything which we need for the Google sign-in setup. And now we can build the application itself. Therefore, I go here first of all to the homepage of our Flutter app. And here I have the scaffold and I also make use of the provider package. And this one is for using our state management. So you can simply put here a provider inside and here later we will put all the logic of our application inside. And now we go here to the sign up widget and here inside we create a column. So let's create here a column. And now we want to actually create this design here. So we want to create this button and also this design. And therefore I simply put here some space inside and put here our welcome text inside. And this is a normal text widget. And we also want to align it here to the left side. So I also put here some alignment around so that we align it correctly. After you hot reload your application, you see here the text. And now we also want to add more space and then it is somewhere here. And here after our space, we also want to add the login button and the login text. So here we create more space and some login to continue text, again some space. And now it looks like this. So we are already pretty close to our design. And now we want to create here first of all this Google sign in button. And we want to put this button on top of this text. So we simply put it here in between. Here inside of this button, we first of all create a container and some padding. And here inside we want to create a button and we call here this outline button. And here inside you can set the text. And this is our sign in with Google text. And then we also set here a shape for this one. So we want to make it rounded and therefore we put it here the stadium border inside. We add also some padding for this button. And then we also define here the border colors and the text color should be black. And now the most important thing is to put here this icon inside. And we want to use here this Google sign in icon, which you see here on the left side. And therefore we can go here to our PubSpec JAML file and put here this plugin inside. And with this plugin, we get this icon of Google. And here we use this icon class from this plugin and then you have access to this Google icon. And we also set here the color red from this Google icon. And to make this button work, we also need an unpressed handler. And now I can hot restart this application and you see here exactly this label, which we have placed here inside. And also the most important thing here, this Google sign in icon. And now we want to make use of the provider. So we go here to our Google sign in provider, which is exactly this provider here where we want to put the whole logic of our application inside. And here we create this provider login. So we want to log into our application and therefore we go here back to our provider. And then we put here this login method inside, which we want to implement right now. And therefore we start here with the Google sign in. So we create an object of the Google sign in. And this is exactly from this plugin, which I have put here inside. So make sure that you put here the Firebase auth inside and also the Google sign in, because these are the plugins which we like to use right now. And with this plugin, you can then log into Google. Let's create first of all, another attribute is signing in. And what should happen is that we later have here a loading indicator showing. So while we are logging in, it is showing here up and therefore we need this field here. And if it's set to true, then we show this loading indicator. And if this field is set to false, then we hide this loading indicator again. So what we do now is to set it initially to false. So the loading indicator is not showing. Let's also create the getter and setter for this variable. And now we can start and implement the login method. First of all, we make sure that the loading indicator is showing. So we set this field to true. And then we can simply call here Google sign in sign in. And this gives us a user. And this Google sign in account has then here all the information of our user, which we get from Google. So we get the name of the user, we get his email and also his URL of his photo, which we want to later use. And you get here also other information which you can use. And this whole message here is basically caring about that the user gets signed in. 
And this is then showing here this dialog inside of our application and then is also signing our user in. And now what we want to do is we want to check if this user is not null. So if it is null, then we simply want to hide the loading indicator again and we don't want to do anything more. Otherwise, if the user logged in into our application, then we want to get here this user authentication. For the Google authentication, we also need some more steps. So we create here some credentials with our Google Auth object. And then we need to sign in with these credentials. So we need to sign in also to Firebase because Firebase is connected with Google then. And after we have connected also our app to Firebase, then we can set again the signing to false. And this then will hide our loading indicator again. And if we already here implement the login method, then also let's quickly do the logout method because this is pretty easy. So we create here a logout method, which we want to use later. And here inside, we first of all need to disconnect from Google. So we use here this Google attribute at the top and disconnect from it. And we also want to disconnect here from Firebase itself. And that's everything what we need here. All right, now I can try this application out. So I can press here on this button and then I can choose my account. And after it, nothing will happen. So what we want to do is we want to log in into our account and to go to the next page. Therefore, we go here to our home page. And here we have right now only this widget here inside of our login screen. Probably you also noticed that before we had no loading indicator showing. And that's why we also want to create here this loading indicator first of all, because otherwise he cannot show this loading indicator. And therefore I simply create here a method for our circle progress indicator. And this will then show here this uh, spinning loading indicator later. And now we want to wrap the sign up widget inside of another stream builder because we need to get here the changes if we are logged into Firebase. And therefore we call here the stream and we go here to Firebase, our instance, and then we detect here the changes to our login. So we get here every time a change if we are logged in or if we are logged out. And then this method is simply returning a user. And this is what we get here with our snapshot. So first of all, I will create here this provider. So this is again the logic which we have created so far. And here we want to have access to this is signing in variable because if this is true, then we want to show the loading indicator and otherwise we don't want to show it. And therefore I simply check here if this provider is signing in, then we want to show our loading indicator and otherwise we want to show here the sign up widget. So this is this page here on the right side. And then we also want to check here if our snapshot has a user inside because like you remember, this method here returns a user every time and it can also return no user if we are signed out. So what we want to check if we have here a user and if that's the case, then we want to build here actually the second page when we are logged in into our application. And here inside of this widget, we simply create a text which is centered and it says that we are logged in. So we can try this application now out. So I again hot restart this application. And before we can test this application further out, we also need to set here the Firebase initialized app inside of our app. So go to the main file and here inside you need to set two things. So you first of all need to set here this binding inside and after it we need to initialize our Firebase app and also make sure that you have here this important statement inside for this line. And now we can try out our application and if everything works, then we should see here this locked in text. So let's try it out. I click on this button and then he is signing in and you see that he shows here this text locked in. Now what we want to do is to show here also next to the text, also the user information and also this button to lock out. And by the way, if you want to get the whole source code of this whole application, you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you can get my Flutter course where I teach you how you can become a more efficient and more advanced Flutter developer. All right, now let's create this design. So simply create here a circle avatar image and some text and also this button. Therefore, we simply remove this here first of all. 
Here we get started by getting first of all our current user and this is what you can do with this Firebase Auth instance and here we get the current user which is signed in and then you have here access to all the information of this user so we get here this display name, his email and so on and you see you can get here many information even his phone number if he has one and also the photo URL which we want to use later to show his image in our application. And now that we have this user information, we simply display it in our app. So what we do is we create a container and align all the things to the center. And we also give it here some background color. So we want to have a background color of blue. And now we simply create here a column and put all the information inside. So first of all, we create again this locked in text here. Then we create here this circle avatar with our image. And here we simply put a network image inside and put here the user information inside. So we need to access here this photo URL from this object here, which we get. And after it, we put the name of this user inside. So simply extract also this display name of the user property. And then we also put his email inside. So again, take the user and then you get here this email of the user. And at the end, we also want to display a button. So we want to display the lockout button. And every time if we press on this button, we simply call here our provider again. And then we call here the lockout method. And we have already created this method before. And this is what we simply call and then the user gets locked out. And again, if the user gets then locked out, then we don't have here any user anymore. And then he simply goes here automatically to the sign up widget. And we don't need to do here anything because we have here a stream. And every time if here is any change, then he will automatically go here again to the sign up screen. And now we can try this out so we can hot restart our application. And you see already that we have here all the information inside. So we are still locked in. And if I click now on locked out, then he will go back to our sign up page and we can try it now out again. So I click here on sign in. I choose again my account. And this time you see that he directly goes to this login screen again. And we have here all the information of the user. And how to create this design here at the top. That's what we want to look at in the next video.